Hey everybody, it's Lon Zybin, and we're taking a look today at a gaming laptop from Lenovo. It's the IdeaPad Y900 17ISK. This is a 17-inch gaming laptop, but I use laptop in quotation marks because it is enormous. This is a 17-inch, uh, really heavy and very large gaming machine, but it delivers close to desktop performance uh, for playing your AAA titles sort of on the road, but I don't think you'll find an airplane where you can easily open this up on. We'll get to the hardware and the performance in just a second, but I do want to mention in the interest of the full disclosure that this is on loan from Lenovo. So as cool as this is, it has to go back to their mothership when we're done looking at it. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. All right, let's take a look at the hardware now. And there is a lot of hardware to talk about on this machine. So you've got a 17.3 inch 1080p display. It is not a touch screen, but it is a 75 hertz display. So if you have games that you can get running faster than 60 frames per second, this will uh, give you non-tearing uh, animations up to 75 frames per second. So a really nice, fast, and responsive display. A really nice color on it and quite a pleasure to look at. So really nice there. Uh, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. This model has a Core i7 processor, a 6820HK, and that allows you to slightly overclock it if you wish. There's a turbo switch here uh, on the side that we'll explore in a few minutes when we look at Lenovo's software to configure the laptop uh, to give you slightly more performance out of it. You can overclock it and its built in GPU. It has a GTX 980M from NVIDIA. This is a mobile processor. Uh, this is kind of the prior generation now of NVIDIA chips because they just announced a whole bunch of new chips and apparently they're putting in their uh, regular desktop GPUs in machines of this size. And I believe Lenovo will have a version of this computer uh, with one of the newer NVIDIA GPUs on board, but that'll probably cost you extra. So you're looking at uh, a price tag above this one's cost, which is $2,600 if you want to go with the newer generation processor right now it's only available uh, with the 980M. There is an optical drive not built in. It's an external that was packed in the box with mine for that price tag. You'll see some other uh, components on here in a second when we get into all the other hardware ports. 802.11 AC built in along with gigabit ethernet. The SSD and hard drive combo is very interesting on here. So you do have a 256 gigabyte SSD for booting up Windows. There's a little bit left on there for installing a game or two on that drive. Then they have a one terabyte spinning drive built into this as well. You can replace both of those if you want down the road. Uh, what's interesting is the SSD is amazingly fast. It's a Samsung PCI drive, and I ran some benchmarks on it with the uh, CrystalMark benchmark. I got almost 2.2 gigabytes per second in reads uh, on that drive on that test. Uh, sequential writes at 1.2 gigabytes per second, really fast on uh, both reads and writes. Even the random reads and writes were really quick on this one. 656 megabytes on the random reads and 364 megabytes per second on the random writes. Very fast SSD, probably among the fastest I've ever benchmarked here on the channel. I don't usually look at machines this expensive. I did ask for the low end one and that's what I got here, but uh, very, uh, very nice speeds out of this, uh, this drive. The spinning drive does not do as well, obviously, but it is uh, you know, on par with other spinning notebook size hard drives. But if you want, you could swap it out and put in an SSD that'll give you better performance. Now, all this hardware weighs a lot. It is 10.14 pounds or 4.6 kilograms, and that does not include its huge power brick here also, which is probably another pound or so of weight to lug around with you. So this is more a portable game system perhaps than a laptop. I would not suggest uh, keeping this on your lap for long periods of time, but you can uh, take your whole gaming life with you in a, a very convenient package here. Uh, it has a really nice keyboard. This is a mechanical gaming keyboard. It's not quite a uh, red switch keyboard, which is more clicky, but uh, the key these do have some uh, nice uh, click back on them and a really nice depth to the travel on them too. So really a nice keyboard. Something you don't usually see on a laptop is a mechanical keyboard, but you have so much room in this case that they were able to do that. The trackpad is not as nice. It's kind of a spongy experience. I also found that they have it uh, configured by default so that you can't use the trackpad while you're using the keyboards. If you're playing Doom or a first person game, you can't really uh, do both at the same time without going into some of the settings and adjusting the uh, trackpad settings to allow you to use this and the keyboard at the same time. Kind of funny that they would have that uh, enabled on a gaming laptop, which would be how most people would typically play games on it. Uh, nice speakers. You got stereo speakers up front here and then a, a subwoofer on the bottom down here. It sounds pretty good. It's not uh, you know, hugely great, not better than perhaps some nice desktop speakers you might get, but uh, definitely nice when you're out on the road, nice and loud with good stereo separation on there. Bunch of ports here on the side. You've got full-size display port and HDMI, gigabit ethernet, USB type C, two USB 3.0 
Nano slots here. I believe these carry power even when the laptop is off, so you can use them to charge your devices. Why not? You've got a ton of power going through this thing. Uh, you have two more USB uh, 3.0 ports here, a Kensington lock for locking it down in your desk, headset microphone port here for a combo headset. You can also plug in a regular microphone over here. Uh, SD card slot. It does stick out quite a bit when you stick a card in, so this will be a uh, grab your photos and take it out kind of deal because that card will stick out. Uh, your power light there and your Lenovo uh, reset button on that spot there. So pretty nice hardware overall. Again, very bulky and uh, certainly not designed to be an ultra portable laptop. There is a battery on here. You'll maybe get four hours of web browsing and email use out of it uh, before the battery goes on you. Gaming will certainly be a lot less. So I would look at it more as like an uninterruptible power supply to, you know, maybe prevent your laptop from shutting down when the power blips, but it certainly will not uh, carry you anywhere near a workday. It's not designed for that. It's designed to be plugged in, uh, sitting on the desk and playing some games. Now, there are two apps that Lenovo installs on the computer for configuring its keyboard and a few of its other uh, unique features here. So I'll take a look at the keyboard uh, commander here first. They call this the Magic Y key. And uh, here you can configure what every key on the keyboard does. This is very similar to what you might see on other gaming keyboards, but in this case, you've got it built into your laptop here. So if I uh, select a key, for example, I can override what that key does. I could set up macros. I can have it do media functions, even have it load up a URL or something like that uh, from a website. You also have four keys here that you can set up as macro keys. So if you want to set up a string of things to uh, happen on a key without uh, taking away the functions of any of your other regular keys, you can do that. What was also neat is they included a key down here for starting and stopping game streaming or recording. So there's a couple of extra keys here that you can configure uh, to your heart's content. And you have three different profiles you can run these uh, keyboards through. So if you have different games that you're going to configure your keyboard for, uh, you can have the keyboard configured uniquely in each profile. So you have some options to do that. Another neat thing here is this little app here called the Nerve Center. And over here, we can adjust, for example, the lighting on the keyboard. So if I click on uh, this profile here, you can see what the current lighting scheme is set to. I'll switch to my two up view here. Maybe we want to change uh, this section here to uh, red and I can just click on the red color here and that will change the keys as you can see. So you do have the ability to uh, change the uh, sectors, if you will, of the keyboard. You can't do individual keys, uh, but they do break it out into different sectors like this to adjust. You can also have it do crazy stuff like heartbeats and uh, waves and, and other kinds of effects on the keyboard if you want to do something like that. And there's also a switch here for overclocking the processor and GPU. So I'm going to switch to my two up view here again. If I flick that switch, we'll turn off that overclocking and you can see it reduces the power going to the GPU by 10 watts and it limits the maximum CPU speed to 3.6 gigahertz. If I flip it on here again, uh, that will boost up the power going to uh, both of those devices to give you a, a slight performance boost. I didn't notice huge differences when I was playing games with this, maybe five or 10 frames per second, depending on the game I was in. Uh, so every game's going to react to this change differently depending on how it's using this hardware, but it wasn't a huge difference. But of course, if you're plugged in, uh, you should leave it on just to get the best possible performance. And I ran some benchmarks with a uh, 3D mark that might be of interest to you. Uh, both with the turbo on and it off. So the first one here is Time Spy, which is a new DirectX 12 test. And uh, when the turbo boost was activated, uh, we got a score of 2,983, uh, maybe just a frame per second better on the first graphics test, uh, maybe two frames per second faster on the uh, second graphics test. So just a slight boost in one of the graphics tests that I saw on that particular test. But this is also a good test just to see uh, how this compares to perhaps a lower cost laptop. So uh, the Dell XPS 15 has the 960M uh, that some of those low-cost Lenovo and Dell laptops we looked at uh, earlier in the year have. And you can see the difference there in that uh, you're almost uh, twice as fast, or if not more than twice as fast, in uh, the graphical performance on uh, this one with the 980 versus the 960 in those. But the CPU speed is roughly the same. So you can see really the big difference here is, uh, first of all, having a lot of cooling, so you can run over a longer period of time at a constant rate of performance, but also a much faster graphics processor. But I did see a performance gain with the turbo button on the Fire Strike test in the 3D Mark Suite, which is a Direct X11 test. We got a score of 8,308 with that button turned on and 7,490 with that button turned off. Most of that performance gain uh, came in the first graphics test. So I think there will be situations where uh, the GPU is used a certain way by a game where that overclocking is going to make a difference and other times when it won't. So that other test we ran did not see a big performance gain. This one did. Also interesting is just to compare it up against some of the other older machines that we've looked at over the last year or 
or so. Uh, it's even faster than the Lenovo Y700 desktop gaming PC. That has a desktop 960 processor. Uh, you can see we got a pretty good gain in performance over that device with the 980M uh, in this computer. So there is going to be some performance gains here and certainly uh, speeds that might rival some entry-level gaming desktops too, but you're going to be paying a price uh, to get all of that in a portable format. Now let's take a look at some gameplay footage and see how it stacks up in a real-world test. We're going to start with Minecraft as we always do. I was getting frame rates around four or 500 frames per second when it was raining. The interesting thing is, is when the weather cleared up in the game, our frame rates almost doubled uh, to seven or 800. This is the uh, Java version of Minecraft, not the Windows 10 edition, which might get you uh, better performance, but uh, that's what most people are currently running and you're not going to have any problem uh, running that on this $2,600 monster here on the desk. I also took a look at Counter-Strike. You can see what settings I was running with there. What I've done for all of these uh, games is run it with the default uh, NVIDIA experience or GeForce experience software just to kind of run it against what uh, NVIDIA would recommend. You of course can tweak it to get better or worse performance as you might like to see. Uh, there we got frame rates anywhere from 130 to 180 frames per second. I did experiment with switching the turbo switch on and off. Did not see a very huge di difference in performance. Maybe 10 frames per second here or there uh, but nothing really all that noticeable when that switch was getting uh, changed back and forth. So you know it might give you better performance. Again leave it on but uh, I didn't see much of a difference in any of these games as I was going through all of them. Uh, GTA 5, I did see a variable frame rate. Again, I ran with the uh, GeForce Experience settings and you can see what it uh, set here for those. Uh, the frame rates typically were around the low to mid 50s, but then if I started driving in the car and going uh, around the uh, city a little bit faster, we were getting uh, faster frame rates around 60 or 70 frames per second. So I think you'll be hovering around 60 frames per second with the GeForce settings. You can, of course, make adjustments to uh, boost that if you want to reduce some of the image quality slightly, but GTA 5, as old of a game as it is, is really demanding on hardware, especially when you crank the settings up, but I was quite pleased with the image quality and the frame rates I was getting from that, uh, given what we have for a GPU on here. Uh, Rocket League is up next. We'll take a look at the settings first, and then we got uh, frame rates in the 160s to 180 range there with those settings pretty much cranked up, so no issues with Rocket League whatsoever. And now it's time for the infamous No Man's Sky, and you can see what settings I had on that game, and I was getting frame rates anywhere from 60 to 80 frames per second. This game is, at the moment, uh, notoriously underperforming on a lot of higher-end hardware, but uh, you'll get a steady 60 60 frames per second most of the time uh, on this laptop and you'll sometimes get into the 80s or so when you're in space and flying around like that. And I also loaded up the new version of Doom that just came out recently. I really think it's the proper sequel to the original Doom that I used to play quite a bit of many, many years ago. And you can see what settings I have here, again, based on the GeForce Experience recommendations. And it runs great on here. I'm seeing uh, a minimum frame rate, typically around in the high 90s or so. Uh, most of the time, it's well over 100. I'm getting about 120 frames per second uh, on the screen here right now. And you can see some other gameplay footage that I captured earlier from this. So really good performance. I could probably tweak the graphics settings higher and get uh, better performance out of it too. The other thing that's really nice about this display is that it is G-Sync compatible. So even as I'm uh, running here at 133 frames per second and moving uh, very fast on the screen, I'm not getting any screen tearing as I do it because the graphics processor and the display are working together to uh, prevent tearing and uh, eliminate at least one setting that I have to adjust on a regular basis usually, which is the vertical sync. You don't have to worry about it. The display is going to take care of it for you and it really looks nice on here. Uh, no matter what frame rate it's rendering at, uh, you're going to get a very smooth, crisp, and clear image here, and it's really uh, quite a pleasure to play Doom and many other games on this laptop. Now, one thing that won't be avoidable is fan noise on this. You do have some pretty big uh, air outputs over there on the back, uh, so you will hear the fans going as you're uh, playing your games on here. It's not too bad most of the time, but once you're really cooking the GPU, you'll certainly uh, hear it running as you're playing your game. So if you have a good pair of gaming headphones, it's probably the best way to go. You will definitely hear some fan noise, uh, kind of unavoidable when you've got all this hardware packed in a, a very small package here. But as you can see, it's a really good experience for a uh, portable device, somewhat portable device. It's quite heavy and quite large, but if you're not really concerned about all that and you've got 2,600 bucks to spend, uh, this is a pretty nice gaming laptop, primarily because they have thought of everything. You've got the customizable keyboard, a really nice hardware, mechanical keyboard, of course, too. You even have a nice Nice textured grip here to keep your wrist from slipping off of it. A really nice uh, device if you're not looking to get a huge desktop tower in your uh, particular living space. You could get by with this thing and uh, get comparable performance to uh, perhaps a mid-range desktop from a year ago. So that's really, I think, where the 980M really uh, falls into play here. It's not going to be as fast as all the new 1060, 1080 stuff out there, but uh, good enough, I think, for most games. 
It'll certainly look better than an Xbox and a PS4, and you'll get really smooth uh, gameplay like you're seeing here with the 75 hertz display. I think they have a smaller one available in a 15 inch display that might cost slightly less. We'll see if we can get uh, one of those in as they keep introducing some of this new hardware. This is Lon Zybin, thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you wanna help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.